A very big hello to my future KCET and PU2 toppers out there. Well, there's a reason why I am calling you a topper. Because if at all you're watching this video, that means you are adamant about scoring full and full in the examination that you're going to give. There might be so many children out there who are least bothered about the syllabus, who are least bothered about what chapters has high weightage, what chapter should I give more time into. They do not have a strategy with them. But you are not like them. You are those who are worried about this thing. And worrying about the strategy is a good thing. Okay, you should be planning smartly. You should not just do hard work. You should have a smart plan. And how do you get a smart plan? When you have a rough outline of things that these are the chapters that weighs this much, I should be probably giving more priority into this. There might be a chapter that I'm stuck forever. Okay, I might be studying this chapter for two weeks now. But if this chapter does not have high weightage, isn't that the right time to move on? Yes. So you will get the answer to all these questions and you will, able, you will be able to strategize things better so this is the purpose of the video and if at all you also agree okay if at all you are in that mindset and that positive uh, what do you call attitude that i am gonna score full and full put it down in the comment section right now that i am ready to score what 60 on 60 can you put it down in the comment section i am ready to score 60 on 60 and if at all you think that this video is useful for you do not forget to hit that like button Going ahead with the first thing that we have, the most important question. How many questions came from PU2 in the year 2025? As in the, the previous exam that went by, KCT examination, how many questions do you think came from PU2 examination? So there are people said that uh, this time PU1 had so many questions and things like that which was not expected. So here I have, uh, what do you call, uh, three, sorry, four options for you just like how you have in your KCT examination. Option A, 45 questions. Option B, 40 questions. Option C, 38 questions. Option D, 30 questions. What would be a correct answer? It's option C, that is 38 questions. 38 questions came from your PU2 examination. That means roughly 22 questions. 22 questions came from PU1. Now you tell me there are certain people who say that please do not go through your PU1. Please just focus on your PU2. That will be the only thing that would be enough. No, the answer is wrong. You have to focus on both. You would have to prioritize PU2 a bit extra because as you see over here, 38 question and over here 22 questions. So there's a 16 question gap. There are 16 extra questions that have come from your PU2 board. So this present class which you are in, I suppose uh, you are a PU2 aspirant. If at all you are someone who is in PU1, then my dear children, make sure you are making your basics really, really strong. In that case, you can get 22 marks out of PU1 itself. And for PU2 aspirants, if at all you are in this particular era where you are actually not era uh, what do you call it, year where you are preparing for your PU2 examination what you can do is try to complete the PU2 portions as soon as possible and in between take few PU1 chapters as well okay take few PU1 chapters which has high weightage and start practicing it in that way you will be in a safe zone from this point onwards you have to start Otherwise, you tell me, how are you going to manage your time? There are 13 chapters in your PU2. There are 19 chapters in your PU1. Would you be able to cover all of it if I ask you to learn all of it within one month? The answer is no. So, which is why I'm telling you, start your preparation right away, which is why this video is equally, equally important. So, my dear children, now going ahead, chapter-wise weightage of PU2 in the year 2025. So, the highest number of questions came from principles of inheritance and variation, which is quite predictable. So, principles of inheritance and variation as well as molecular basis of inheritance. My dear children, these two chapters have been something which has been always top on list. So, this time... Uh, what do you call principles of inheritance and variation is the one that overtook the position and gave five uh, number of questions in the paper and if you talk about molecular base of inheritance it came down to three it usually comes to four and five but it has come down to three but that's still fine you have all the other chapters sexual reproduction and flowering plants having three 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 most of the chapters gives you three questions each so they are all important now biodiversity conservation and organism and population both of them are small chapters and both of them give two two questions each and also we have ecosystem which is all again a small chapter also with two questions each so my dear children all these chapters are something that you can really do well 
in okay so 2 plus to 4 4 plus to 6 6 marks are guaranteed because they are very very small now there are certain chapters which might be big but if you know to prioritize them if you if you have what do you call watch one shot videos of those chapter okay be with me i am taking classes in sankalp series my dear children i am covering principles of inheritance from basis and i can tell you one very important thing if you are there with me okay if you study with me i can guarantee you that you will be getting this 5 on 5 because I will make sure your basics are really, really clear. In that way, whatever questions comes off from this chapter, you will be scoring that. So over here, I have completed one, two. So I'm com completing this chapter. I have completed one, two, and three chapters. If you study with me, okay, if you watch the videos, three plus three, six, six plus three, nine, what do you call questions, you will be now only able to attend in your KCT exam which that is going to come the next year. So with this slide you get to understand one very important thing that more or less all the chapters of your period 2 are important. Okay and these three chutku chapters would still give you 2-2 two, two marks each. What have to what you do you have to prioritize more this chapter principles of inheritance and variation and also molecular basis of inheritance. So next year the trends can be changing up but anyway this will be around 4 and 5. That's for sure. Four, five, three. That's all. Not, not going uh, lesser than that. Okay. We will be seeing the year-wise trend as well. So don't worry. We'll have a comparison. Now, if you talk about PU one, this year the chapters which gave two marker questions were different, very different. Okay. So it was usually it was animal kingdom that gave two marker question. Okay. And uh, it was um, morphology of flowering plants that gave two marker question. But this time it was anatomy of flowering plants that gave two marker question. Cell cycle and cell division, cell the unit of life, they mostly give two marker questions. So these are the chapters which have been remaining constant with giving two marker questions. So you can study them. Okay, you get it. That's how you can prioritize them and get your marks. Okay, and neural control and coordination again, this is something rare. It has come up top. Okay, it also gave two marker questions and all the other chapters gave one one marker question each. Okay, so that is the trend that has been seen this particular year. I hope that's understandable. And now we will be having uh, what do you call a trend analysis. Has there been much changes in your PU2? Okay, has uh, some chapters come to the top, some chapters gone to the bottom? What should be your uh, what do you call way of prioritizing thing? So sexual reproduction flowering plants as you see, my dear children from year 2020 it was 3, then 7, then 4, then 3, 3, 3. So we can expect at least three marks or three questions coming off from this chapter this year the next year also human reproduction also it has been running around three two three four four three so again we can expect it to be three itself reproductive health it has been one two two four two three so as i told you from every pu2 chapter you can expect at least three marker questions at least three marker question rest of the three last chapters which are there biodiversity ecosystem and organism and population even though this year they gave two marker question but next year you cannot predict it can be a three marker also so just have this expectation that all the pu2 chapters could give you three markers questions so with that expectation try to study from this point onwards there are certain chapters which are very much important and those are this principles of inheritance and molecular base of inheritance and there is a it is data driven also you see over here it was five 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 four three over here molecular base of inheritance so almost it's five five and four the first time it had been three this year you get it now that can be changing the next year similarly over here if you see four five 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 so these two chapters are something that i should be putting investing my more time in and as i told you as of now i am covering this chapter i have just had two sessions of this chapter there are few more please watch it it is going to help you really really well okay now human health and diseases has been constant with four five five three 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 again next year it can be three or it can be four molly uh, sorry microbes and human welfare it had been two four two 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 three this year it has increased we can expect the same okay so for all the other chapters i will say expect three marks that's all now, biotechnology principle and processes, it has been 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3. Biotechnology and its application, again, 2, 4, 3. Then one year it didn't came at all. And again, it came back with 3, 3. Okay. Organism and population, it was 3, 5, 5, 2, 3, 2. So you see, if at all this trend is repeated, what will you do? What will you do? You will be feeling like stranded. So that's why I'm telling you, 
think of these chapters as small chapters which can give you enough questions. It can be two. It was two this year. You prepare for two questions, but what will happen whenever you prepare a chapter fully since they are short, thinking that you at least won those two chapter, two questions. So I'll study my best to get those two questions. What will happen is that somehow if the question pattern changes up and again they give you five questions from the same chapter, you will still be able to solve it. That's the use of it. Okay, so these small chapters, this we say no, in chota packet bada dhamaka. So same like that over here. It's like it can give you marks. So don't don't think that I will just leave this chapter and go. No, you can never predict what could happen the next year. Okay, so this is how it went. Biodiversity and conserv conservation also for one year it didn't came uh, for ecosystem also one year didn't come. But then again, my dear children, two three two three is what we see. So we can expect something out of it as well. So what do you need to prioritize? These two chapters, okay? Principles of inheritance and variation and molecular basis of inheritance. This should be something that you should be putting on high priority. Then comes medium priority chapters, all the chapters, okay? I'll start from sexual reproduction and goes up to all of them. They are medium priority. There is no low priority chapters in your PU2 examination. Please understand that, okay? In your PU2, not examination, PU2 syllabus, there is no low priority chapters. All the chapters are having enough amount of priority either medium priority or high priority so please prioritize them in that way going ahead with this thing is that has there been any changes in pu1 so uh, chapter wise uh, the what do you call the numbering has been put up so you see the living uh, the living world plant kingdom animal kingdom so animal kingdom is something that gave two two questions each but this year it has been just one okay morphology of flowering plants had been given two one 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 so over here usually this is something that has of high weightage but again it gave one mark at least anatomy of flowering plants my dear children it gave two questions this particular year and you see the irony over here it was missed for three years it was missed for three years and then popped up again over here with two questions okay so please understand things can change now structural organization in animals one 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 each cell the unit of life as i told you over here this is something that you should prioritize cell cycle and cell division is something that you can prioritize in your pu1 rest of the chapters they can go up and down but there again there are certain chapters which are medium weightage i will say this is something that is of medium weightage this is something of medium weightage morphology of medium weightage animal kingdom of medium weightage these are the chapters which you can count as and also plant kingdom the rest of the chapters that you see can give you at least one marker question okay can give you one marker question all of the other chapters which i have marked over here will give you will be giving you at least two marker questions at least some of them will be giving you two marker other of them might be giving one marker but there are chances that you get get two marker questions from these chapters so if at all you can please watch one shot videos don't waste your time studying the whole chapter all at once it might be difficult for you one shot videos could help you really well so you can watch that okay now going ahead, we have other chapters also. Breathing and exchange of gases, there has been no questions coming off. And if you see other chapters, neural control and coordination has shown a change in the trend. From one marker, it has came up to two marker this particular year. So yeah, other chapters are there. Again, ma'am, should I skip some chapters of your PU1? No. Why? Because I told you from each, each chapter, at least you get one question. At least you get one question. So if at all you can pull up those chapters and have uh, what do you call go through the one shot videos one. In that way you will be in touch with the videos. And the one shot videos whenever you are watching watch it in 2x speed. That will save a lot of your time as well. And it's like you are brushing up the things that you have studied. Don't, don't, whenever you go and prepare for PU1, don't think that this is all fresh for me. Uh, previous year I didn't study properly. No, it, it might not be like that. Your brain might still have some memory of certain things. So think in a sense, go and sit in a sense that I know things, I just want to brush up. When you have that manifestation in your head, my dear children, you will be, st you will be able to understand things better. So always be positive, okay? So this is about your PU1. So this chapter that you see over here does not have any, what do you call, uh, uh, just a second, okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 19 chapters are there. Okay, anyways, now going ahead with one very important thing that is you have to be aware of practicals also. Now from the, uh, what do you call the previous year, that is 2025 onwards. Um, Okay, so previous year I meant that by 2024 they said that practicals would also be included. So this was implemented in the year 2025. So in those in the paper of biology also you had some questions related to practicals and they have already given you a syllabus of the practicals. So these are the 
what do you call practical portions you can go through these questions so whenever you have practicals being conducted in your pu2 make sure you're taking those seriously and learning something out of it because it is going to help you really really well okay so make sure you're doing that so uh, anatomy of flowering plants i think most of the questions came from it because it has some practical aspects to it as well that's the reason probably it came to give you two marks so there were some practical questions also which were from those chapters so you can go through it properly okay the list is given to you if you want some more help from our end we are ready to provide it to you put it down in the comment section remember we are here to help you out so this is what i had to tell you and with this i think you have got the basic idea that not all chapters um, so the first idea that you might have got is that i should not be skipping any chapter of pu2 so ma'am can i skip a pu1 no you should you can take it in between you can pull it up it but you should not be investing too much time into it you should be investing just little amount of time what one shot videos and that's how you you are prepared for your pu1 do not go around studying for pu1 so much because as of now i suppose you are in pu2 your pu2 marks also count so prioritize your pu2 more and there are certain chapters which will short short give you great great marks do not miss those chapters at all anyhow okay anyhow so make sure whenever you feel that i cannot take that that uh, uh, please watch the videos which we are providing to you it will make things more more clear and easy to you okay so that's all i want to say we will be coming along with lots of other videos if you want us to do certain videos put it down in the comment section as i said we are here to help lots of love to all my dear children i hope you have not forgotten to subscribe if you have forgot subscribe right now bye bye take care lots of love